Good afternoon. My name is Scott Rudler, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap. It is Wednesday. Um, pretty much, you know, probably the last Wednesday at this time that people are going to really be focusing on the market. You know, I guess tomorrow after the close, which is the last day of trading, people are going to see how we closed, where we closed, you know, before everyone goes out and celebrates New Year's Eve and then has uh, the weekend to spend time with their family and friends. So today it's really, I don't think that conducive to go over, you know, the action of the market. You know, I'll show you some levels that I'm looking at to start the year, you know, whether or not the bulls or the bears could take control first. I feel at this point, you know, your year's done. You know, it was not an easy year. This was the year where every time the S&P looked like it was ready to break out, it failed. And most times it looked like death. The, you know, basically you had a short squeeze that went for three, four days that squeezed, you know, the, the Kijesus out of people. There was very rarely continuity with things that made a lot of sense. You know, yes, you had a few days where things closed up and then opened up, which is what you like to see as a trader, or things closed down and then had downside follow through if you took, you know, overnight shorts. But there was a lot of misdirection moves. There was a lot of elevator up, elevator down. You know, you had one breakout above 2100 to 2135 before failing. You had one breakdown. You know, in the market, when volatility spiked and we thought all of a sudden we're going to get volume and volatility and we came right back in the range. So there wasn't a heck of a lot to do. There were moves. There were there was things to make you money. But I do think the majority of people had a tough time. You'll hear information about the funds that had a hard time, how Warren Buffett had his hard, hardest year ever, Art Cashin, who I love to death, hardest year he said in 50 years. And it has been a tough year. So if you've had a tough year, don't second guess your ability. Don't second guess, you know, whether this is for you. What you got to do is kind of put it behind you. Take a look at all your trades for the year, what you made money and what you lost money. And so you can be honest with yourself. What do you think to, to about what you're good at? And then you'll see where you lost and you'll know what you're bad at. And then try and make a list of things you need to work on, things that you do well to build on and things that you do poorly to, to try and stop doing and then things you want to do better. You know, for me, that's get short versus getting out of the way. You know, you, you put it on paper and you try and do that because, you know, every time I think that I know the market's not going up and I sell my longs, if I would just get out of my longs and instead of getting out of the way, get short, I probably would have added a, a nice amount of P&L to my year. So the next day and a half is not the time to push it. This is the day and a half and this is the next few days to kind of reflect on how you handled yourself and you know, did you take losses early? Did they turn into bigger losses? Because losses happen. It's how you handle and manage those. You know, those trades that are unexpected because a lot of the fastest trades this year were the misdirectional trades or the false moves that created fast moves because everyone else was on the other side of the market. So then how did you handle those? There's lots of things you're going to have to look into. But for now, you look at the, the SPX. Let's just get to it right away. You know, here is your range. Same range we've had for a while. This is your descending channel here. Here is mid-end, okay, where we held going into the Santa Claus week. And here is the low end of the range, okay? And this is the S&P. You're going to hear all day about whether or not we're up, down, et cetera, et cetera. We all know that it's not really that big of a deal. All you know is that for primarily the majority of this year, okay, here is your upper end of the range where every time it got up here, failed, here, failed, here, failed. Oh, you had a little push, failed. Oh, a little push, failed. Going to break down here. No, boom, boom. And then finally, you had your one big break of the, of the SPX. And thank goodness they were below all the moving average. I think guys did really well shorting this. And then you had your buy in the hole in the first half an hour of that flash crash to get the bounce. And that set up you know, this uh, first low, the V bottom. And then you had your pivot that we got above to get back to the higher end of the range. Most people probably started shorting bottom here and got squeezed out into that before pulling in. And then this is where we are. Okay. Very frustrating. You know, you could probably even draw this like this now. So with that being said, lots of sporadic little moves here and there. And at this point, you know, I'm not sure what tomorrow brings. All I know is today, if you look a little closer here, you will see, um, you know, you have support one, which I'll be trading in short hills tomorrow, which we'll talk about. We'll see how we open up, which now is, um, what is that? This uh, low here is um, about 2060-ish. And then the rest of the gap gets filled into 2056. And then here's your 2042. So this is your defined resistance as we enter 2016. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Here is support. I'll talk about the open. Here is one clue if the bears come in and we close below 2044-ish. 
you know, probably risk off and cheat a little bit to see how far into the range we go. And if all of a sudden, you know, starting in 2013, we start getting above this series of high, lower, high, lower, high, you know, maybe you get a little better action here to the upside. But for now, not much to do. I'm flat overnight. You know, you had a, a nice little Santa Claus move, a, a shallow pull in that reversed into a decent bar yesterday. And now, could we have another inside day? Yes. Could we pull in a little bit more? Yes. Could we open up? And I don't think we're going to take this out tomorrow. Same way I don't think we're going to take this out tomorrow. We might be somewhere in here. And I think what's going to dictate that a little bit is oil. Oil has been weak all year. You know, first thing most people do when they come in, you know, they look at oil. And right now, oil gave back most of yesterday. If you take a quick look at the USO, um, we'll see how um, it opens tomorrow, I guess. You know, it, at this point, still hanging by a thread. You can take a close look here. Um, you will see that uh, the USO, let me, sorry. Whoops, get, let me get it up here. Whoops. You know, this was, this was your low, okay? This was your, your last little V bottom. Sorry to make it like this. Um, and now it's kind of, it's, it's probably retraced a little bit more than it should have, you know, off of this resistance. So here you are still above this, so it's hanging by a thread. The question is, does it make new lows? And that would bring a lot of volatility next year. If you, you know, shrink this down, sorry, I'll just do it real quickly, you know, to see where it came from. You know, oil has been in a, how did, like, people are like, how, how'd you know? How, how come you avoided all year? How come it was never a swing trade for you in oil? You know why? Because we talk about trend lines. We talk about the 8, 21 day, 200 day. You know, oil has been basically below the 200 day. You know, where the USO has been a, a, a sell on rallies and only play, you know, quick little, you know, bounces pretty much since about 33. <laughs> and now here it is all the way down there at 1090. You had this first move to start the year. And then once it broke this inside wedge, it was get out of the way. Then you had this potent move here, and then basically did it again when it didn't hold this, and that's where it is right now, which again, <laughs> all the way down here. So this is your threshold, and anytime oil breaks a threshold, you know, that's when the market notices, and at this point, here is that little spot down here in the, in the sequence of all these trades. So I'm not going to get that much further into it, but that'll be, you know, something that we'll be watching tomorrow and we'll be watching to start the year. Do you get a January type effect bounce? In this and the XLE, the XLE itself also, you know, basically hanging on by a thread. This is the lows of the year after utter annihilation, and it's hanging out right there. That's where we closed today after hitting that resistance. So <laughs> starts getting below this, not much in front of it. So a move back below this, all of a sudden, you know, all the junk bonds and the, the oil companies, et cetera, et cetera, that's what we'll be watching. It's below the 200-day, so you never hold anything below the 200-day as a momentum traders. It was below the 8 and 21 day, this entire trend lower. Here, it bounced back to it, still below it. Nothing more than a trade, if not just a short. Um, as far as the thin leadership, yes, everyone knows that's not an old story. Fang, 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 everyone talks about that. You know, Google and Amazon held in there today. Uh, we did get a good little trade in, in Tesla. Tesla was, you know, up yesterday. Let's get, it, you know, it, it basically gave you an extra push. Good cash flow trade. Couldn't hold as the market got weaker, but all in all, here was your day one into that. My exact strategy was buy more through 238 and probably see 242, and that's pretty much what happened. Look for my chart on Twitter. Sometimes it's cash flow, sometimes it's more. Still, you know, a decent thing to focus on today if you're not in, in the Bahamas on the beach or in Costa Rica or whatever with the family. It was a good cash flow trade as it opened up down a dollar and gave you a nice rally for the day. Um, Amazon held its prior pivot. Google held its prior pivot. Both look okay. We'll have to see what happens next year. Do they, you know, does, does people who didn't want to sell it because the tax, tax gains ramifications come in, that might happen. We'll look at that. <clears throat> and then we'll also look at Apple. Apple's been really weak. Apple, excuse me, hold on. I have to take a little sip of my coffee. Now, Apple <clears throat> is below every moving average, and it broke its trend right here. Okay, now, if Apple were to break, this 105.50, chances are you are going to see weakness in Apple and the macro pattern here in Apple with this head and shoulders top pattern that I've been talking about for a while um, is, is getting louder and louder. Um, here's your left shoulder, here's your head, here's your right shoulder. Already pretty much broke the neckline, staying below it. You know, I, I can't, I, I would say, if you're talking about what's gonna happen first, which next 10, 15 points, back up to here or down to here, chart-wise it looks like here and that's not going to be good for the bulls. So we know what to watch. 
going into the end of the year. We know where the range is in the S&P. If they want to you know, use new money first to break us above 2090, we'll be there. If people start selling the market to start the year and oil breaks lows and fang stocks get sold and Apple breaks 105, we know that it could be a weak start. First five days typically are important. They say as go January, as goes the year. That's also true. We'll see. Sometimes it's not the case exactly. But all in all, you know, the year is almost over. Take the time to relax. Get yourself situated. Make your list of all your, your strengths so you know what to work on. Write down your weaknesses and then write down a few things that you want to do better. We all have things we need to do better, including me, including all the head traders here. And, you know, the, the market's going to be here with or without us. It's your choice and your um, decision on whether or not you're going to be there with it. Okay, and what does that mean? It means time, it means education, it means learning, it means a routine, it means a process, and you know, that's not all easy. They don't give it away on trees, but when it's there, it's one of the best businesses in the world. And as far as long term and time frame, you know, I'm not even getting to macro, you know, 401k, 529, or you know, cost averaging, and that's a whole different story. I'm talking about trading for a career, creating alpha, picking the best stocks out there, using a system, you know, having risk um, you know, processes in place with discipline in order to continue to do this each year and grow. And from my experience, which has been pretty, you know, since what was 1998, this has been a hard tape. Nobody wanted to get caught by in the top. And every time you had this rip roaring rally, people have been shorting since 2013, shorted too early, got squeezed out before they were probably eventually right. And if you pressed a short, you got hurt. Same way if you added from momentum and along, you got hurt. So put that all together, not an easy tape. So hold your head up high, stay the course, and you know, look for my 2016 report. If you haven't bought it already, it's on the front page of uh, T3 Live. You can get it. It's only $99. <laughs> so for $99, you'll get my thoughts. You'll get 10, 12 stocks that I'm isolating with levels. You'll get education. And you know, I've been doing it since 2012, and I don't think anyone's you know, unhappy if they bought it. And if you don't want to buy it, that's cool too. You know, the reason why I hate to say I have to charge for it is because we have video, we have editing, we have the lights, we have the studio. So in order to get a, a product packaged correctly so you could view it and get value from it, we have to charge it a little bit like any business out there. And, you know, I think it does create value added if you want to get it. If not, you know what, we'll, we'll continue making progress, but you have to have your proper resources around you to get you in the right frame of mind in order to, you know, just it, you know, move forward. That's what we try and do, move forward forward. With that said, have a happy and healthy new year. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of my community. It's been a tough month with my back and I'm getting better and stronger. I know a lot of you deal with adversity, you know, and deal with the adversity. It's because how you handle adversity, which defines the true essence of who you are in any aspect of your life. Have a great new year. Scott Redler, see you next year.